Today, we're gonna to be answering the age-old question of which tool should you vibe code with, and we're gonna be comparing two of the top agentic AI coding tools. That's gonna be Claude Code and Warp. Now, both of these tools have been extremely popular in the past. A lot of developers are starting to onboard onto it, and as someone who is interviewing a lot of developers for technical roles, I have seen a lot more companies start to ask for proficiencies in these types of tools, so the question is, if you're gonna to onboard to one, which one should it be? Now, quick disclaimer, Warp is a sponsor of mine, they have sponsored previous videos and they are sponsoring this one, but I only took this sponsorship with the agreement that I can make a completely objective analysis of Claude Code versus Warp. And luckily they agreed to it. So everything you're gonna see here today is gonna be my objective opinion. I'm not gonna try and sugarcoat anything. And to keep this as objective as possible, I'm gonna be scoring both on four different criteria. Number one is code quality. How easy is it to actually onboard an engineer after the coding is done? Number two is gonna be performance and latency. How long it actually takes takes to make what we're trying to make. Number three is UI quality. Was it easy to actually use the tool or was it just a jumbled up mess inside of a terminal? And number four is scalability. How well can it handle increasingly difficult tasks as the code base gets larger? And as for what we're actually having it build, we're gonna do a completely original idea, something that I don't think anyone has ever thought of or ever done in the history of humanity, which is going to be a website that allows you to chat with LLMs, but you get to choose which LLM you chat from. I'm also going to be using the free tier of both tools to see how far I can actually get without paying anything. So that'll be interesting to test as well. Now, starting off with Warp, it actually is a AI tool in itself. And it started off as, I believe, a terminal, but you can now do agentic stuff inside of it. So to get started with this, we're going to have to download the Warp terminal. So I've gone ahead and downloaded Warp and it looks pretty good, way better than any terminal I've actually used. And there are three different modes here. One is auto detection, which is like terminal and agent mode. And you can like have it choose based on what you've typed, whether it's a terminal command or agent mode. We're going to go ahead into agent mode here. And this is the prompt I'm going to give both models. So create a Next.js site where I can chat with an LLM. It should look like ChatGPT, but it should give me the options to choose between any of the latest OpenAI, Anthropic, or Google models. And I'm going to go ahead and click enter. It's 11.47 a.m. Let's see how long this takes. It looks like it created a couple of different tasks for itself. Um, and it's asking me if I want to run create next app, which obviously is fine. Okay, yeah, it looks like in the settings, I can get it to just run commands. I'm gonna create that to always allow it uh, so that I don't have to keep accepting it every time. All right, it's now 11.52 and it looks like it just completed. So it made a whole bunch of changes here and it's telling me that it created the project and all I have to do is just create the environment file loaded with my API keys and run npm run dev. So let's go ahead and test that out. All right, the environment variables are in. We're gonna try npm run dev for the first time and see what we get. And Looks like we're running into a couple of errors right off the bat from Next.js. Let's go ahead and paste it into our agent and see if we can just fix it. In the meantime, we could take a look at the coding style. It looks like they created a lot of components for the chat, which is nice. A lot of the times uh, AI will put everything in one specific file, but it looks like everything here is actually siloed and pretty modular, which is very nice when it comes to code. Like there's nothing I've seen yet that is over like a hundred lines of code or even getting close to it. And I think if I had to pick up the code from this this point, it would be extremely easy. So that looks really good. All right, and it looks like it ended up fixing the code. So we can see here we have our models. Let's start with GPT-4. Hello there, how are you? And looks like we got a response. So that was around six minutes in total. I know the timestamp says around 10, but uh, but I'm keeping track of how long it's actually spending running uh, instead of just like me sitting there doing other stuff for the video itself. So yeah, after around six minutes of running time, it looks like we have a pretty functional um, LLM here. I just tried to make a request with Gemini and it looks like we're getting an error with that. It might be because it has the model name here is just Gemini Pro. If I change this to maybe Gemini 2.5, flash. It looks like that went and fixed it. So it didn't have the actual data on what the Google model was called. And even with what it's using from Claude and GPT, it looks like there might be some training cut off with the model I'm using. And if you go back to the agent chat, you can see you can actually choose which model you want to use. So right now I was using light, uh, but it looks like auto is actually Claude for Sonnet. So I'm going to switch to that. In models, you're using outdated models. Can you clean that up? And that took around a minute. And it looks like after all of that, 
it added a couple more models, but it's still a bit outdated. And it's kind of ironic. I'm using Claude 4 Sonnet under the hood to do this, but Claude 4 does not actually even know about itself. So it never added itself to its own API. And all this probably has more to do with the actual model under the hood that it's using for the agentic workflow as opposed to the agentic workflow in the first place. So now that we're using a better model under the hood, I'm going to ask it to make the UI look way better and to use local storage for chat history. And I want to look identical to chat GPT. It's like we ran into a quota limit as it was trying to update the Tailwind config, but it did quite a bit before that. I've gone ahead and signed in to my pro account um, and I'm going to ask it to finish up just to see what it would have looked like. That's kind of nice while I'm waiting for it to do stuff. I can just look through the actual changes it made to files to like spot check to see if it actually looks good. All right, it looks like after around four minutes of total running time, it says it's done. So let's go ahead and check it out. We're getting some weird formatting issues. I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it and see if it fixes it. Nice part about it is now it's running build to make sure that everything builds properly before telling me that it's done. So I'm not gonna run into issues hopefully once it fixes all of this. And it looks like it is done. Basic like UI thing. So new chat, let's go ahead and test this. I wrote test and the assistant message is replacing our message. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh to see if it's persisting. And it looks like at least it is persisting. And yeah, there's quite a few bugs to fix here. Let's take a look at the code itself to see how clean it is. It looks like it put the actual session stuff in its own hook, which is very nice. You don't want this logic laying around in your actual code. So it makes debugging what's going on here a lot easier. It created a types folder with a chat.ts, which is nice. A lot of the times LLMs will just put all the actual types in the files that are using them, which makes it so that you have duplicate types all over the code base. And while there definitely are some bugs that need to be fixed, the code code actually looks really clean and I feel like I would be able to dive into this code myself, figure out what was going on and fix a lot of it. And in total, what we have here was built with 11 minutes of vibe coding. Moving on to Claude, the nice part about this is, is it runs right in the terminal you already have. But the sad part about this is, is that the terminal you already have probably doesn't look as good as Warp's terminal. We can go ahead and install Claude code by just using an NPM command and they make it as hard as possible to figure out how to actually run it because the only command they have here is the actual install and everywhere on their docs, they don't actually tell you what command to run it until you scroll all the way down, go to their documentation and find that the actual command you should run is Claude. This is what the UI looks like. It's a lot more low fidelity than warps. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in the exact same prompt. It's asking me if I want to run it again. I'm going to click yes and don't ask again, but it's only for that specific command. Cr do create next app. It asks you a couple of questions of how you want to start the repository. And Claude wants me to answer for every one of them, or rather it's trying to get me to approve their override for every one of them, where in warp, since it was a terminal built in, I could just select it like a normal terminal and it took like two seconds. And because this is just running in my standard ghosty terminal, there's no settings I can go to to have the LLM approve every time it wants to like run NPM install or anything. So I have to be there at least for the first time. Like here it's asking me if it wants me to allow it to create the .m.local file. And I have to like select yes and always allow for every brand new command that it wants, which is pretty annoying, especially at the beginning. Even here, like it's asking to modify a file, which is like the literal purpose of an AI agent. Just like Warp, it looks like it created a to-do list and we're around four minutes in now, which is the amount of time it took Warp and only has a couple different things to to do. I don't know what test the application with different models is going to look like, if it's going to try and do that itself somehow, or just let me test it. But ideally, I'd like to get my hands on it sooner rather than later, because it's sort of just doing things in the dark. And while there are hockeys like control R to expand things, it sort of like overwrites the entire rest of the output. And if I remember correctly, Claude code is made with a library called ink, which is like allows you to write react code for your terminal. So it's pretty low fidelity in the sense that it probably didn't take them a lot of time to like code this, but also because it's not built in their own terminal like warp is, it's also like very limited in how the user experience actually is. Whereas with Warp, I was just able to click a file to expand it. Like Warp can add that because it's their terminal. But with Claude, they're sort of at the mercy of whatever like this library allows them to do within a native terminal. And it looks like we are finally done. That took around six to seven minutes, like six and a half minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it. I just added the environment variables in and let's see what the first one looks like. Okay, so 
Not very surprisingly, it looks almost the exact same as the last one. I guess we are using Claude under the hood, so it kind of makes sense. It still has the same issue where it added the exact same models the last time, and I actually had to double check that I was even in the right directory and I didn't just rerun the warp code again because it looked so similar. Let's go ahead and test if it actually works. Hello there. And hello, how can I assist you today? And it looks like it generated it pretty good. Let's take a look at the code. Yeah, overall, the code looks pretty similar. I'm going to go ahead and give it the same prompt that I asked Warp to make the UI look way better and to add local storage. And of course, we somehow have to give Claude permission to do everything all over again. I guess it's because I killed Claude to run the app. And now I got to restart Claude, which restarts all the permissions for some reason. I find the to-do list to be pretty funny, like update color scheme and layout to match ChatGPT's design. Update sidebar to show actual chat history list. <laughs> like, yeah, the previous sidebar was just showing the not actual chat history list. Sorry about that. It looks like it also is trying to go above and beyond by adding chat management functionality, like saving, loading, and deleting chats. It's very noticeably a lot more difficult to pay attention to what is going on here. Sort of swaps between just giving you giant diffs in the code base, outputting its updated to-do list, and then just like a standard loading message. That took around five minutes, so let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna create a new tab this time to run it. I don't know if this exactly looks a bit more like ChatGPT. I guess so. Let's test if the message history works. Okay, so basically everything is broken. It's kind of crazy that it took the thing that was working and just made it completely not work. And I was not able to follow along to anything that it actually did, so I don't even know where the issue could be. It found a potential issue and it's, just adding console logs everywhere. I don't know how these console logs are helping in any way. I'm gonna paste them all to see if that actually fixes anything. It's stated that the main issue is fixed. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh, test message. Oh, we can see our message and it gave the, for some reason when, when it was loading, it gave it like a WhatsApp icon. Did you see that? Like, let me try, like, uh, how are you? Look at that, there's like a WhatsApp like phone icon. I'm gonna refresh it and it looks like the message is saved. So. Overall, it looks like it's somewhat working. Test with a new chat. In total for Claude, it costed around 93 cents, I think just to do what you saw there and slightly longer than 13 minutes to actually create what you saw. But I guess in the end, it did work better. So those were the results. Which tool should we actually use? I'm gonna say in terms of code quality, they were both equal. I feel like the code was pretty well organized, especially for a smaller repository. I was using Claude under the hood while I was using Warp for the majority of the time. So everything sort of looked the same and I liked how both of them did it. When it comes to performance, Warp spent way less time on average per query. I got way more information about what was actually going on. And while it did have a couple more bugs that it had to fix, I feel like I preferred the performance of Warp a lot better. With UI quality, I think it's no surprise Warp wins hands down. The fact that Claude is super limited in the UI because it's using ink and it's just shoehorned into an existing terminal makes it extremely hard to figure out what is actually going on with what it's doing. It is pretty much the embodiment of vibe coding because you have no other way to go about looking at what it's doing other than just Vibe. Whereas with Warp, not only is it like one of the best terminal UIs I've ever seen, but it was so easy to follow along with what it was actually doing because they own the terminal. I can click one of these and have it actually expand the change so I can see what it changed and the entire file while still keeping up with the rest of what it is doing, which you cannot do with Claude. The fact that I could just go into Warp settings and change, for example, needing to approve every every single little thing the AI does, all is one click changing what the theme of the terminal looks like. It's just no competition when it comes to UI. And in terms of scalability, how well it can handle bigger code bases, I feel like Claude code handled it a bit better. And I don't know what they're doing under the hood on the agentic part of things, but it seems like the steps that it came up with and how it was able to handle something like adding local storage, even though it had a bug at the beginning, almost perfectly after fixing that small bug, was a lot better than how Warp handled it. So I feel like as the code base gets bigger and bigger, I'd probably trust Claude code to handle it more than Warp. But that being said, as a daily driver, I would definitely prefer Warp. And even before they sponsored me, I was using it over Claude code just because it's so much easier to integrate on a daily basis because it's practically your terminal. Quality of life is just infinitely better and way less frustrating than Claude code. And you can choose any model you want with Warp. You can go from an OpenAI model to a Google model to a Claude code model and see which one performs better on an average ongoing basis. And every time a new model from, for example, a different provider other than Anthropic comes out, I don't need to change the entire tool I am using just to use it. I do not want to have to hop between OpenAI's codex, 
whatever they called the Amazon one and Gemini CLI just because they have a slightly better model at the time. With Warp, I'm able to pay once, use whichever model I think is best for my code base with an infinitely better user experience. And that is why even before they sponsor me, I have been using them on a daily basis to code my startups. And if you want to give Warp a try, you can use their premium pro plan, which has 2,500 AI requests for just a dollar for your first month with my link in the description or the pinned comment below. Thanks again, Warp, for sponsoring this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.